In 1964, an initial case report was presented at the first International Congress of Parasitology in Rome involving a 29-year-old male school teacher from northern Luzon in the Philippines. The patient suffered three-week diarrhea prior to being admitted to a hospital in Manila. A week later, the teacher died. Two years later, the authorities were notified by a Catholic missionary priest in Tagudin, Ilocos Sur, central Luzon, due to multiple cases of chronic gastroenteritis that had been devastating Budok West a village only 150 kilometers south of the initial case. Not long after, it spread to nearby towns. By the end of 1967, more than 1,000 lives were affected, 77 of which resulted in death. The village people believed that all of this was happening due to a curse coming from a mystical river god, and in any curse, witch doctors were summoned to perform exorcisms. But it seemed the river god demonstrated how powerful it was by taking the life of one of the witch doctors. These stories sounded like a myth, but not until more than 30 years later when Dr. Vicente Belisario Jr. encountered a similar mysterious case. It was habitual that I, I bought the daily newspaper every day, now driving from Laguna to uh, no, the College of Public Health, which is in the PGH complex. In the papers inside, it's an inquirer or across the nation. There are some little articles that are happening in the provincial community. So the attention was called by a headline of a small article that talks about people dying of acute gastro uh, of gastroenteritis. So I said, three people die of mystery disease. And then days after, there was an article again in the same newspaper, a small article again that talks about another four die of mystery disease. I looked at the, the place that no, the, the article was referring to. The place was called Moncayo. Postella Valley. Postella Valley. Siguro mga three articles na similar mystery disease. And then I said, ano kaya itong mystery disease na to? Ilang araw ko nang nakikita itong mystery disease na to. What caused these mysterious deaths? Then one day, as I was coming back from my lecture in the College of Med, kasi kami sa College of Public Health, kami nagtuturo ng para may cross sa UP College of Medicine. Pagbalik ko sa lecture ko, balik ko sa kwarto ko, merong, merong package sa ibabuo ng mesa ko. It was an LBC package. With the return address, uh, Tagum City. Now, Tagum City is the capital of uh, Davao del Norte, and, the, and there is a tertiary center there called Davao Regional Hospital. Malaking malaking hospital yan. Referral yan ng mga sakit from all over Mindanao. And, and the letter with the package said, Dear Dr. Belisario, I am Mr. Rex Sumacote, is a registered med tech, etc. So this young man remembered what I talked about, and he said, Dok, Dok, please check. This specimen is informally the LBC package was not a gift, they thought it was a regalo. The LBC package contained a preserved specimen related to the mysterious disease that caught his attention when reading the newspaper a few days ago. Dr. Belisario immediately alerted the Department of Health and formed a team of experts from the University of the Philippines Manila and the Department of Health to go to Mindanao and investigate the outbreak of this mysterious disease. In a small remote village in Compostela Valley, there is a mysterious case of a woman who looked beyond her years, wasted from a life plagued by the disease. She came from multiple hospitals and came close to embracing death due to a lack of a cure. People dying of diarrhea, the same story, 10 years apart. It used to get better, people dying, and people thought it was witchcraft. No, the bottom line was the lack of good diagnostics. When you look at the picture, she looks she looks more like a grandmother in her 70s or 80s. But her age when the photograph was taken was only 31 years old, you know. And she was skin and bone. We call that in medicine cachexia. But there is bipedal edema because of malabsorption syndrome. Rebecca's entire family, as well as her friends, died as a result of this mysterious disease. She had made up her mind that she too was going to die. She asked people to let her meet her maker in a shabby house, lying on a bed while the illness ravaged her body. Compostela Valley had become hopeless as a result of this mysterious disease. Rebecca still believes it was some form of witchcraft and that she did something to deserve it. She refused to be brought to the hospital because she said, this is not a worm. She said, this is not a worm. She said, this is not I said, we saw eggs of the, of the parasite in the snow. 
Was this woman a victim of witchcraft? Why do the vast majority of people in the area die in unexplained circumstances? Or is it more likely that it had something to do with their way of life? The Visayans in the area were known to enjoy kilau, a freshwater fish soaked with condiments and eaten raw. Where do you get your fish? Ah, Doc, ano, pero naglalakot dito ng saltwater fish. Pero most of the time, we get our freshwater fish from the sub, from the suba, from the sapa. It's the freshwater stream. Pero mga ano, 300 meters away, sa trail. Most of the residents had no appropriate drainage, no toilets, or bathhouses wherein they could defecate or bathe properly. After a series of investigations in Compostela Valley, the patients and victims whose specimens that were sent through LBC from Davao to Manila, including 31-year-old Rebecca, her entire family, her friends, and other symptomatic patients in the barangay were found to share the same mysterious disease. This mystical river god seemed to be invisible to the naked eye, but yet so ferocious that it caused a disease outbreak that slowly debilitated and eventually killed several people in the community. However, the culprit behind this curse that cost the lives of people in Compostela Valley was not a supernatural entity nor witchcraft, but a microscopic organism known as Capillaria philippinensis. Capillariasis has an unembryonated thick-shelled egg that is transferred in feces. These eggs become embryonated in water, consumed by freshwater fish, and then develop into an infective larva within the tissue of these intermediate hosts. Humans can then consume these infected fish raw or undercooked. These larvae then reinvade the small intestinal mucosa in an auto-infective cycle. According to Dr. Belisario, the cycle is simple. People eat fish and fish eat feces. But how did a parasitic infection endemic in northern Luzon reach as far as Mindanao? Dr. Edith Torres, an infectious disease specialist and medical professor of microbiology and parasitology, will provide a clear explanation to this phenomenon. This is a zoological disease, okay, coming from birds because they are the natural host. They are the natural host, meaning to say, but they a reservoir host feeds them. They have the infection, but they do not have the disease of capillarized, so they do not die from it. So they harbor the adult, okay, itong mga uh, fish. And the uh, infective states nila is the ova that comes from them. So, what do these birds do? Their droppings are filled up with ova. And so, uh, nothing, uh, we can say that uh, migratory birds can be a source of the infection. Remember the migratory birds? When it is already winter, they go to the warmer part. Okay, and then so they go to bodies of water, or brown water or lakes, and so they uh, have their droppings there, and so the ova, together with their droppings, go the water. So the fish, which are there, they eat the ova. This develop in the fish into the infective stage larva, which is the third stage larva. So when animals, monkeys, and even humans eat this infected fish with the infective larva, uh, they mature into adults. This was proven true by the works of Dr. John H. Cross, an American parasitologist who described the life cycle of Capillaria philippinensis and worked in San Lazaro Hospital for 10 years. In the first place, the biggest question of them all was how, how did this Capillaria reach Southern Mindanao? How did this Capillaria reach Sambuanga del Norte? According to Dr. Cross, they dissected many, many, many animals that was part of his precious work when he was in San Lazaro. They found the parasite in fish eating birds. As auto infection mechanism, because the first generation adults mainly are larvivorous. So that means the larvae they will become adults directly. 
And then, second generation, meron kong iparose, meron garbing parose. And that is what will cause the hyperinfection or autoinfection. Diarrhea, cachexia, nausea, abdominal pain, progressive weight loss, and weakness are the common clinical presentations of capillariasis. Borborygmus, however, is the outstanding feature. Clinical presentation. So why will you have cachexia? Okay, you lose proteins, large amount of proteins. You become dehydrated because you lose also potassium, calcium, all those electrolytes. So those are the characteristics of a full-blown capillariasis patient. You have eosinophilia. But in capillariasis, as a differential diagnosis, you have a patient with malabsorption. Eosinophilia is not a predominant manifestation in capillariasis. Where do you see capillariasis? You must know the culture of the people. Because after all, the differences in the incidences or prevalences of parasitic infections depends on the habit of the patients in that area. This was attested by the inspections and interviews conducted by Dr. Belisario, along with his team from the University of the Philippines Manila and the Department of Health. People from both provinces were fond of eating kilau, or raw fish, as well as defecating in the same water where they catch the fish that they eat. The eggs might look like trichuris, but really there are finer points that will make it capillaria. If it is trichuris, you treat it with one day mebentazole or one day albentazole. But if it is capillaria, you have to treat it with 10 days of albentazole and 20 days of mebentazole. So that's malayo the treatment. Intestinal capillariasis is a treatable enteric parasitic infection if diagnosed properly. They found out that albendazole has a direct effect on the larval stages, unlike for mebendazole. Diagnosis is usually done by analysis of stool samples. However, there have been cases wherein the parasite was not detected in the stool. Now it's possible that with a small, small amount of stool, because of small, small amount of food being taken in, now there's not much parasite material that you can see anymore. So I would go for concentration technique. You want more sensitivity, you concentrate the stool. And then lastly, it's endoscopic biopsy, because you can capture the sections of the worm embedded in the mucosa, and if you're lucky, there are sections of the worm that show the eggs inside the worm. The mysterious disease that had been roaming Compostela Valley, wrecking death, pain, and misery, had finally been identified. Fast forward, seven months after, we go back to the same community. I recognize a lady, quite familiar. I checked her yung nakita natin seven months ago. And true enough, it was her. She looked right here. Before, all the death and suffering was due to a treatable disease. Now, Filipinos have learned they are much more equipped to fight a parasite that they could not see. Nobody is given the responsibility to change the world by himself. Take the leadership of the health sector that is the DOH must focus on the neglected diseases and make sure capacity is built wherever they're needed in different regions in the Philippines. And try not just to become a doctor, try to become good, compassionate doctors. The Philippines largely remains a superstitious country. Mysterious diseases that would cripple entire towns, such as capillaria, still exist. But with the advances of technology and the growing dissemination of scientific knowledge, these diseases can be eradicated. The intent of the material is to call attention, to highlight the neglected problem, to help people. That is the motivation. If you have the right motivation, you're on the right track to do a good job.